We had somebody knock on the door of our jam space here, and they're like, uh, "Hey, uh, can one of you guys come next door to our jam room?" And I was like, "Oh yeah!" <laughs> and I didn't know. Yeah, I like, feel like getting murdered today. Yeah, well, I didn't know what it was about. And then the guy was like, um, "Hi." We already did this late. Did we shit? We okay. We already did that. Uh, shows where I am. Welcome to the audio station. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. We are. Uh, well, I, I am Louis Vasquez. I'm Andy Danner. We are the audio station, at Hello. least the hosts of it. I'm the co-host. You're the host. I'm the co-host, okay? Hey, know man. your role. I, we're, we're both co-hosts in this. Both, if both I, I, co-hosts. <laughs> say both co-hosts five times fast. Fuck you. That's hard. No, I won't do that. We are uh, based in Toronto, Ontario, bringing you Toronto indie bands every week. Uh, a new act every week. We sit them down here and we talk about what inspires them and what drives them to have made music their career and their passion um today we have the pleasure of having scotty middleton from the hardcore punk band cancer bats fuck yeah oh yeah. my god i'm super excited about this it's i've known him for a good one a long time and uh i'm sorry i'm gonna move this this way sounds better wow yeah way clear um that's very loud now i know turn me down um yeah i've known him for a long long time He's tell me about that because i actually i know that you guys know each other but i don't know the backstory like, i haven't seen him in a very long time how did you when did you guys meet school oh my god no no like probably back in like 2002 2003. was it a party was it a recording no he used, session? To, he used to play in a band called uh at the mercy of inspiration that's right it's like yeah. a black okay. metal band um they were fucking amazing. Yeah, I saw that in their bio. Yeah, yeah, like they were that band was huge. They were number one when it came to metal in Ontario for a while. Um, then, once At the Mercy of Inspiration broke up, Scotty came out with Cancer Bats, and from the opening riff that I heard, I was like, "This band's gonna fucking take this place. This band's gonna be huge." They birthed a giant. Yeah, they um, did. <laughs> they did. So that's, that's that was nice. That was a nice. I, yeah. I like that one. Uh, so was, you're saying... Could work. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, all right? I do my research. But so yeah. you played uh, gigs with... Um, with his, Yeah, with his old band. Uh, I believe my... I think I only played with Cancer Bats maybe once with one of my old but bands. But you did play with Cancer yeah, Bats. Yeah, right, right at the beginning. Wow, that's Like cool. right at the beginning. There you go, Andy Dinner. Yeah, He's so all over the place. I can't wait uh, to talk to him. Yeah. All about it. You know, not many people know, and I hate to expose you, but not many people know about your acting career. Oh, fuck. When you were a child. You know, Jesus, that's, you just dropped the bomb. You just dropped the mother of all bombs. Listen, not many people will know about that. That's a topic for later, I that's think. That's a, yeah, yeah. Let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. <laughs> Let's not get into that right now. But yeah, it's the end of the se- uh, the festival season, at least the summer festival season here in Toronto. Yeah, it was a good one. I made my way out to absolutely none of them. You went to see Steely Dan. I was not a festival, though. No, Just but a concert. at least you went out. I went outside. Yeah, <laughs> I did, did that. Um, I did, that's why we're doing this, because we're getting bands to come to us. This was the first year um, in my music, music life that I actually didn't physically buy any tickets, but I was at the concerts because I, I now work like audiovisual stuff. Yeah. So um, I was there forever after for um, uh, Electric Island. Um the Carabana one over at uh, Vaughn that was happening, the whole stage set up there. Um, yeah, it's 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 been an interesting summer of uh, of concerts here, um, but there's some there's been interesting things happen at concerts, not even festivals. Uh, specifically, now that comes to my mind, Marilyn Manson recently played or recently was supposed to play. <laughs> recently pl- did not play. But did not play yeah, Toronto. I had a couple he, of buddies uh, go to that show and they were pretty bummed the out. The tickets were pretty pricey. I mean, they were like 60 and oh, up. You got to pay Rob Zombie and, and Marilyn, Marilyn Manson. Manson. And then Marilyn Manson, didn't, the whole half of the show didn't show up. You well, know? he showed up. He just did, couldn't make his way onto the stage. Well, he, he didn't show up on the stage, so he, I, don't, he was I don't care. There, but right? just not there. Um, a lot of my friends went too, and uh, they were pretty disappointed. Uh, he, he, yeah, and there still has not been any refunds or any talk on, repre- you know, trying to fix that problem. Uh, I think that was at the Budweiser stage, and I, I don't know. Like, come on, c- get their money back. Give them at least a, a partial refund or something, you know? Like, these people paid money to see a, a whole act, and they got half of it. Not no uh, disrespected Rob Zombie, who killed the show. 
Um, I, I saw him back in 2011, and he is insanely good. I heard his show is like incredible. My yeah, room, my, room, my roommate went to I've his show, it. and it's yeah, he insane. said it was amazing. Yeah, he's a showman. He's but at the same time, <laughs> a lot of those people bought tickets knowing that it was a package deal, and they didn't get the package. Have you ever listened to? Um, well, the white, mm-hmm. so, white, any white or white zombie or Rob Zombie like isolated vocal tracks. No. It's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. I bet. There's like the, there's, because they keep on taking it down. Um, but if, if you're lucky, you can look it up and you can find it. Try YouTubing Thunderkiss65 isolated vocals. <laughs> it's. Like it, he's like not saying fucking anything. He's gibberish. <laughs> it's, he's Hobo like, gibberish. He's like, they're like I and like even looking at the guy back then. If you even watched the music video, and you're like, they just picked up a crackhead too. <laughs> just like, hey man, you got dreads. Let's bring him into the studio. See what he does. He's just like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's like, but it's so bad. It's so fucking bad. Like that's pretty obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. I. Well, it's I, bad. It's, it's it's crazy how it it's mixes funny as well. Fuck, though. It mixes well into the song. But on its oh, own, it on sounds its own. Oh, yeah. ridiculous. Same if you listen to um, Running With The Devil, Isolated Vocals. I think I have. Oh, my yeah, God. Like, it's yeah, atrocious. It's, it's, really it's so weird. fucking bad. But all while growing up, I was like, yeah, man, that, that this song's the shit. Whoa, whoa. Like, like that over and over. And it's just like it's unbearable to listen to. Yeah. It's dog shit. Um, I know it's kind of unrelated to metal, but Nicki Minaj also con- canceled her concert in Toronto. You okay, know, okay. Everybody's canceling Toronto. It's just, it's weird. It's a weird vibe. Drake postponed his concert, but you know. I heard, it, like, did he not do that because he went to go visit, like, sick children in the hospital? I was, like, it's actually what I, what I read or saw something pop that up. Sounds fishy to me. You t- keep talking. I'm going to pull this up. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, a lot lot of flops in Toronto lately. Uh, Toronto venues in, in Toronto are closing. Um, I th- recently in Blog Tio, there was this um, update or not update. It was a post. Goddamn. Yeah. On um, the loss of Toronto alternative dance music and how the the lot the loss of venues. Right. Uh, what did I that. say? Look at this, the cameraman. Look at that. He really is the sixth god. So for those on the uh, <laughs> listening to this on the audio, uh, he, Andy's just looking up a blog to post saying that Drake um, postponed one of his three shows in Toronto this week. He did it for Sophia Sanchez, an 11 year old child who's currently fighting her life in Chicago. Oh, he went to Chicago. Wow. That's pretty. That's pretty nice. Drake. She wasn't fighting her life. She's fighting for her life. My apologies. <laughs> That'd Obviously. be weird if he was fighting her life, <laughs> fighting her life. So he flies out to Chicago to fight her. <laughs> Drake, you're mean. Aubrey. He's just picking beef. Yeah. Um, but no, that's nice. That's, that's sweet. It's that's like, really nice. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Like representing Toronto in the proper way. Yeah. So that's a very Canadian move, I, I feel. That's really nice. Yeah. Fair. Um but uh, I was saying, yeah, loss of venues in Toronto. It's, yeah, sorry about that. It's happening yeah. all over. Um, you got the big bop, goodbye. What happened to Elmo Combo? Um, so it was bought by one of the Dragon's Dens dudes. Right, right. But that was four years ago. Yeah, and it's still, I don't think it's still been opened up. Apparently, or three. a rumor is he's, he bought it for $3 million. It's like $3.6 million or something. I don't know the exact number. But then he's put a, roughly $10 million into it over that time. And I I have not seen any shows at Elmo Combo. I have no. not seen any posters for I was just, I was for just on their website, and there's fuck all on there. I there's passed by there, and it's still closed. Yeah, yeah. Man, that place was amazing. It was great. That I've place, played there. It's a two I've floors. I've played there many times. Yeah, yeah this was, a, it was a such a, a fun venue. The constantly, Some, consistently good bands yeah, showed up like, there. Good sound. I remember two of the better shows that I've seen. One was a Misery Signal show. And it was like the sweatiest show of all time. Like it was really? disgusting. Well, that's the thing that's that. That's the only thing that sucked about that venue is it was pretty hot. It was you were having concerts in a sauna. Well, was, I mean, you know, it, it it's fine if things get a little steamy. Oh, it's fine, but it's not. Fine. It, it gets to a point. It does get to a point, but uh, you know, you just want to die. So you got the you got the hideout. You got soy bomb, Hoxton, Silver Dollar, 
Club Rocket. Wow. Oh, fuck, man. Like, they're just dropping like flies. Yeah, that's crazy. You, you got, that's a big list. Well, that's, that's just a couple of them. That's just a couple of the ones that's that the I, bigger ones. I'm familiar with. Yeah, that's yeah. The, some then of the bigger ones. Yeah. And imagine what's going on with like the smaller bars that host, you know, music venues. It's, it's kind of crazy, but, you know, we're here to support live music. Uh, speaking of live music in Toronto, uh, here's a couple of shows coming up in September that you might want to get tickets for. They're selling quickly. Um, first up, uh, coming at the beginning of September, and September 2nd, over at Rebel, Dead Mouse is playing. Good old Canadian uh, Dead Mouse. I, I met him once. I didn't, is, I didn't, is I didn't he tell a you dick? the story. No, he's actually a really, really nice guy. Shout out to Dead Mouse because I love him because he's a dick sometimes. I, he's like, I, he speaks his mind, you know? Why does that make you a dick? If no, no, no. Not, I, two separate statements. Okay. Okay. I was going to say. <laughs> but um, I used to work at a. At an auto body shop, fixing cars, and he drove his Ferrari in. He cur- and he, and, oh, and he, you just met him? Yeah, and I just met him. That's yeah. Pretty, that's pretty Yeah, he, cur- he curbed it. I don't know if I should be saying any of this out loud, but... Don't say it out loud. I just did. Use so, your inside on, voice. It's September on the, It's 6, on the internet now. September... Sorry. What was his name? Joel? 6, Sorry, Joel. That's right. Pentatonics. You know Pentatonics? Nope. Well, a lot of people do, and they might be interested to see them at the Budweiser <laughs> stage September 6th. <laughs> well, if they're playing at Budweiser stage, then yeah, they obviously have fans. Yeah, no. Uh, they're touring with Echo Smith and um, Callum Scott. I'm not familiar with them, but, you know. Oh, no. Yeah. That's... Whew. Go, Callum Scott. You know, you're making it now. Um, do it. Prozac. Prozac. Oh, yeah. Aren't they playing with fucking Aqua. B44? Yeah, Aqua. That's it. They're going to be Jesus playing God. Barbie Girl for their encore. You know it. Um, that'll be a really weird show. That's going to be the most embarrassing show of all time. Maybe. I God, it might like, go are down. Are you kidding me? It's like, top 10 embarrassing shows of all time. Oh, my you know, God. It's, like, it's, might as well throw like, Lou Bega <coughs> on, that, on that tour as well. Just he does Mambo number five like seven times in a row and then gets the fuck it, off the stage. It is pretty uh, cheesy. That's the. It's the cheesiest shit ever. It's yeah. like yeah, like it's there's like this whole like, you know, profiting off of nostalgia. September eighth though, over at uh, Echo Beach, RBC Echo Beach. For those of you that are interested in that, no hate to the cheese. The cheese is good sometimes, you know? What are you talking about? I don't know, man. Challenge Gambino. <laughs> September. The fuck, the fuck was that all about? September tenth. With um, Ray Simran. Simran? Simran? Oh, do your research. You're embarrassing S- yourself. Simran. No, but uh, Challenge can be no fuck. He's... Simran? Just banger after banger. Just... Simran. 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 I don't know. Yeah, Challenge Gambino is. Uh, I he 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 was talking about retiring, and then um, I, I I'm not sure that's gonna happen uh, anymore. I think he's the heat of, of no, you know, I think he retired from from acting. No. Not for music no, or vice versa? No, I think he mentioned that he was going to retire the Challenge Gambino, like, whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, you release, like, arguably the song of the summer and then you just stop? Well, I don't know if it was the song of the summer. Well, it was it's the up, video it's up, it's up there. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Video, video for you sure. You know, because, yeah. like, the song itself. It's good. It's, like, but it's not, like, as good as the video. I wouldn't put it to like, just hang out and jam out to you know like uh, it's such a message it's so powerful it's like it's like the music video is though like the lyrics are kind of not great they're just eh, eh, you know what you i mean know? exactly right. that's exactly what i mean it's not a banger yeah but it's sick it's a great message and yeah. it's a and that's really what i was saying when we, when we had uh, when we had adrian romahan on and i was like yo it's not <laughs> about the actual with him it's not about the the beat the beat drives hip-hop and rap music yeah and yeah. like the lyrical content is just like phew, turn your phone off that's unprofessional well i'm i'm waiting for messages from uh from our, our guest here but um, oh you are no i'm not i'm just lying i'm trying to look cool <laughs> yeah you're not figure it out hosier bruno mars maroon 5 Dude, bruno mars is so good man that bruno guy, mars it puts on like, a show i don't care he's, he's very like, talented make fun of me fight me bruno mars is the shit no no he's good he's great he's man. talented and he knows how to put up good people in a room and, together and you his know? dance moves are nuts he's a good drummer too who is he yeah. Yeah. yeah did you ever see that photo of um it's like Pete Wentz walking down in like Los Angeles and then like it's Bruno Mars like oh my god that's Pete Wentz no but this is from like 15 years ago true <laughs> and like now th- the tales have turned true now, yeah now Pete Wentz would be like holy shit that's Bruno Mars yeah but there's also Leon Bridges Shaggy oh and Leon Bridges go see Leon Bridges go see all these people we're and actually Shaggy? Gonna- Shaggy 
we're gonna introduce uh, our guest now. Let's bring out Scotty from fucking Cancer Bats. Let's yeah, go. Let's do it. Let's bring him out. Here is Scotty from the good old Canadian hardcore punk band Cancer Bats. Let's go. Spill drinks. We'll just spill drinks. Three Not drinks. none of mine, but yeah. friends, and it's just never a good time. It's just. It's always beer too, isn't uh, it? Yeah. 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 We're going. We're going. Okay. We're live. Pro thing. <laughs> Not buy, live. buy insurance on your laptop. Yeah. It's the yeah. Best thing because anything goes wrong, you got a new laptop. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's pro w- tip. Water really <laughs> just kills way too many computers. It's crazy. Yeah. One time I had a Gatorade underneath my arm like this as I was picking up my laptop, and it just went fucking all over uh, my whole keyboard. And then yeah, I th- this one actually, and then I just threw it in a tub full of rice for a day. No problem since. Welcome back to the audio yes. station. Yes. Uh, we are here with Scotty Middleton, our honored guest here. That Thank- guy. Thanks. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining us, man. I really appreciate you coming down. Thank you for having me. Now, I wanted to start this off because, like, as we talked earlier, like, I've known you for a while. Yeah. Now, I'll never forget the first time. <laughs> Dude, the first time I heard that fucking riff, I was like, this band is going to absolutely blow up. Oh, that's awesome. And man. now you just finished up a European tour. Yeah. How was that? Oh, it was sick. Yeah, we did, uh, we did a bunch of festivals. We did... Um, so a lot of Eastern Europe, which is always really, really great. Um, I've got uh, some extended family out there. My my wife's from there, and uh, lots of heavy metal fans. Yeah, there, yeah, and, oh, and, yeah. And, and so it's like it's a bit of a second home. We've we've always like really connected to a lot of fans out in Europe. It's and it's just like one of those special places for us in the world that we always love to go back to, and you know, even some of the smaller towns. And we got it. You know, we did some uh, big festivals like in uh, Germany and Romania, and then we wow. even got invited to do this like this really cool sort of private festival. If you can imagine, it's basically like um, in Switzerland. Uh, some friends of ours run this like annual festival called the Food and Fuzz Fest, and basically it's. It's kind of just at their house, <laughs> which is like on the back of a potato field and sort of near the like the, the French side of the Swiss Alps and stuff. Wow. And Only in Europe. You know? Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's really cool. And like <laughs> and like they uh, it, it like poured rain, but they had like a tent that like could hold the stage and, and everybody like pitched in. And because it's like the food and fuzz thing, they like made amazing like uh, like Thai curry for everybody, That's which crazy. was the best. And, and we all had this like great time and the funny thing was is like we had just basically come from like uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia uh, playing shows there and when we were in Czech Republic we did like this big fest there called Mighty Sounds which is super great and near the end of our set uh, at the Food and Fuzz Fest we saw this kid and he showed up and he just starts rocking out and we noticed he was wearing a Mighty Sounds Festival shirt and we're (laughs) like whoa this is crazy you (laughs) went you went to you know, we start talking to him after. We're like, "That's crazy! You 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 were just at Mighty Sounds too." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I went just to see you guys." And we're like, "Whoa, that's really cool!" And now you're seeing us here. He's like, "That's not what's crazy. What's crazy is that 15 minutes ago, I was sitting on my back porch, hanging out with my buddies, and we could hear Hail Destroyer being played <laughs> across the like the valley. Wow. And we're like, "What? The we're f- like, that sounds like Cancer Bats. What's going on?" <laughs> so they like. They rode their BMXs and, and, sk- and skateboards like over oh my God. to just follow the music. They're like, holy shit, cancer bats are playing in our village. And because it was a, a private like festival where it's like kind of by invite only, yeah. they just didn't know about it. What the and then f- so they came and they were like freaking out. It was really cool. And like, that's like the heavy metal dream. I yeah. Say. Yeah. It was like kind of special. And you know, and it's like, it was one of those things. And uh, you know, the, the whole, the whole, the whole tour was a lot of fun, and and like I said, we got to hang out with a bunch of family and stuff, and that's a um, really unique experience, yeah. man. That's like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. If I and like correct me if I'm wrong, for what I remember, it was a while a while back. But your first show was at Q Bar, uh, or, was that, or was it the 360? It was the 360. 360. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I like I was at like your first show. Yeah. And now you're telling me stories about this tiny ass private village in Europe, and kids hear your song like from across a potato field and they're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, was, like, it was cool like, like, well and, and did you ever think at all when you started when you were playing at the 360 your first show did you think it was this is no <laughs> i mean like and it's funny because we only played that show because my previous band at the mercy of inspiration we we essentially broke up and we were supposed to play that show 
and the promoter was a friend of mine. I was just like, dude, uh, at the Mercy can't play, but I've got my new band. Can we play instead? And he was like, fuck it. Yeah, just play. <laughs> I can't cancel the show. It's too late. This new band cans your band. Yeah, and, and, so, and so that was cool. I mean, if you want to get technical, the first time we ever played live on stage was in London at a uh, venue called the Embassy. I don't know if you oh, know. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Very, very well. Yeah. yeah. And very London, good. Ontario. Yeah. London, Ontario. Yeah. 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 And, and You know, it's crazy because London is actually on Spotify. You're the city that listens the most. Uh, in like, you know how they rank how many, what city listens to your music the yeah, most? Yeah. London's number one. For Cancer Bats? For Cancer Bats. There you go. Lon- wow. right, England. I- Oh, sorry, London, England. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, that's okay. definitely like you the, mentioned. Europe is like a big yeah. yeah London is like huge yeah. We're there. we're bigger in the UK probably than anywhere in the world. It's amazing. Really? Actually. Yeah, we're really lucky. But but before we get into that, yes. the um the cool thing was so um if you guys remember the hardcore band Bane, oh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. Well, you know, some people <laughs> yeah, don't know no, them, and so some some and, of the people if you have not heard of Bane, definitely go uh, check them out. Yeah, you have like. To. Their, their first record was like so influential to us, you know, growing up and stuff in, in, in the hardcore scene. And basically, anyways, so we drove a couple hours to go see Bane play. And um, the cool thing was, is there was this rad hardcore band from Welland called Keep It Up. Keep It Up. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. you're bringing me way back yeah, yeah. here, dude. Oh, and, my God. And they were, they were great <laughs> friends of ours. Of course, we were really excited that they were opening for Bane. And we showed up and the Alexis on Fire guys were there, too, because they were like, oh, we love Bane. We love Keep It Up. And, you know, so Liam and I came out and we were like, um, yeah, we just got back from band practice and we were like telling the Alexis guys and they're like, oh, like, oh yeah, your new band, Cancer Bats, whatever, right? Because, you know, they knew about it because we were buds, That's crazy. Um, but they hadn't heard it yet. And, and they were like, you guys have to like play. You, you like, obviously you have your like guitars in the trunk of your car, like, like why don't you play? And they then hadn't the heard dudes, the band at no, that point. No, and, and the dudes from Keep It Up were like, totally, like just use our drums and our amps, like come up on stage in the middle of our set. And then, <laughs> and so like we came up and we played that song Shillelagh that you just oh, like mouth ripped. And, yeah, and right. that was like our first thing. And it was crazy because like from the get go, people went like nuts. Yeah. Like from the, from the first time we played that song, it was really cool. And, and it was funny because like after like uh, Bane went on, they're like, yo, I don't know who that band Cancer Bats was, but if all their songs are that good, I'm gonna buy every record they put out. And we were like, "Oh my god, that's the coolest that's thing!" Like I'm you know, we were all like, man. we were all like dying that like because you know they were one of our favorite bands. So it was like a and real special formed. moment from yeah. the from the get go. Yeah. And then yeah, it just I don't know. And we, you, already had, you already had so much support with that, the Mercy of Inspiration. Yeah, like, you know, you guys are fucking and, huge. And too. I think the thing was is just you know like I had learned so much from from being in that band. You know, learning what to do, mm-hmm. what not to do, and. And I think, um, you know, we had all been in other bands and it was just mm-hmm. one of those things where all of a sudden the things aligned the right way. And we were like four guys who kind of got together to that united purpose. Of like, hey, we're just going to focus our lives on music mm-hmm. and see what happens. And you were already yeah. you were already in the right position to like actually be able to take on that. Role. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, we took yeah. risks in it. It's, uh, you know, and committed to it. And that was that. what, 2005? Yeah, like uh, 2004, really, it's like, is yeah. when we, Liam and I first started jamming together, and then, like, it was we, a good year. Yeah, yeah, and then we put out, like, our first, like, uh, EP was at, like, the end of 2004, and, right on. and then, like, by 2005, we got Mikey, who is our current drummer, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then the next year we put out, like, our first full length, so... Yeah, it's just been yeah. what a roller coaster, man. Like, and the, the I was trying to come up with. Uh, I was hanging out with Lou on Tuesday. We were doing some prep for the interview, and I was like talking about you know Shillelagh, the opening riff there, and I yeah. was like, that riff comes in like you're kicking down the door of a house party that you weren't invited to. <laughs> That's like the best way that I can, and like what a way to start a fucking career. Crazy like riff. what yeah, a was, way to start. Like, thanks man. It's so like, that rip is so captivating. And like, I just want to say it was like so right time, right place. And it, it's cool. Cause we still play that song live all the time. And like, I bet it still bangs on yeah, like, it, as hard it, as ever. It's, it's really, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky and you find those special moments. And, mm-hmm. and that's the thing that I'm happy about is that we're not like, cool too too cool to you know keep playing our old material like a lot of bands do and i i think it's it's important to like 
you know, pay respect to like where you started. Of course. Regardless. Roots, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think our fans appreciate that. So definitely. Yeah. Like, there was some, um, I, th- I heard people talking about it. I can't remember the band name, but they're like, yeah, we went to go see them play and they didn't play a single song off their first album. Yeah. And I was like, like how, how, a do little you, disappointing. how do you do that? I mean, yeah. I get it. You know, like I've been playing these songs for like 13, 14 years now. And it's like, I bet those songs do not get boring to play. Yeah, I mean, you know, like anything, of course you always want to, like, your new stuff's the most exciting thing. Of course, but, like, of course. You also have to, you know, pay notice that, like, if you've been around and you're putting out a new record, there's every chance that there's people who aren't going to be as familiar with it. Yeah. And if you overly focus on that, especially, like, you know, I see a lot of bands where they'll go out on tour, like, two weeks before the record's even dropped, and they'll play mostly new songs, and I see them, like bomb a lot of shows and it's it's one of those things that we like you lose people quickly it's not like we don't play new songs like you know probably in like an hour set we're like throwing like five or six new songs but it's you know we make sure that there's a good mixture of everything yeah i mean they're fans for a reason because they like your old songs so you might as well give them what they like exactly yeah i uh it was funny i was talking to a friend recently and he he was telling me about this band that he I, i guess like he had started working for um, as a tech or whatever, and um, he hadn't worked for them in a while, and he came back, and they just they played some set, and he was like, "Oh man, you guys like you guys killed it!" And they were like, "Yeah, but like we only had like a forty five minute set. All we could do was play the hits." He's like, "That's exactly why it was great." <laughs> and and no, and no you know, and, and you think about that, and you're like, "Yeah, there's like yeah. I mean, for as many deep cuts as people wish you would always play, and you can have that stuff if if you perform too selfishly, like." You know, there's every chance that you're always going to lose the crowd could abandon you. If, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I agree. Yeah. How, how did Bad Sabbath come about? Um, I mean, it was like a random thing. Like we were playing uh, the Sonosphere Festival in 2011. And um, and that's in the UK for anybody that doesn't know. It's it's not around anymore. Unfortunately, it was a really great like metal and rock fest. But um, essentially, we were we were playing it as Cancer Bats already. And the promoter of it, who was like a really good friend of ours and our manager, he was basically he had i think a band cancel and he was like if any band could like pull together a cover set and make it awesome he's like i bet cancer bats could do it and he was like guys can you can you do (laughs) something (laughs) like can you like play some like i don't know he was like can you play like some guns and roses or like something like he like listed out something yeah we were kind of of like (laughs) don't know bat sabbath is actually a cover band made up of mostly cancer bat members yeah check that shit out yeah doing doing black Black sabbath Sabbath songs yeah exactly and 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 so yeah and and so basically what happened is he uh, uh he asked us if we would be willing to do this and we kind of like you know because he's our friend we threw some jokey emails around and then i was just like Oh yeah, we'll do an all Black Sabbath cover set and call it Bat Sabbath. And then he just wrote back in all caps, Hell "Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you have to do this." And then so we we did it, and um, nice. it was funny because they didn't announce who it was doing it or whatever. And so there was all these like rumors going around on like Twitter and stuff about the festival, and people were like, "I think." Somehow somebody was like, "We think it's the Foo Fighters," oh my and like, <laughs> my God. I don't, I don't know why somebody thought that, but that was like the heavy rumor that was going around. So Mikey thought it would be funny if he like made uh, a Foo Fighters logo and duct tape like on his like kick drum. Oh my God, <laughs> and, that's so yeah, good. And, and, and like the whole tent was out. like, it was cool because the thing was is that uh, Slipknot was headlining the fest, and but it was like the Saturday night and people camp out there and it's like yeah. a very like, uh, you know very traditional thing like you camp out the whole weekend when you go to these festivals in the uk right. and so they were like okay the headliner has to finish at like 11 30 but these people need entertainment for the rest of the night because they've all been they're all wasted they're all partying they're having a good time they don't want to just cut it there because right. you know and uh and so they were like we need you to play like after slipknot we're like oh, i don't know how oh that's my gonna God. be you know how like, the fuck do you <laughs> follow that up yeah, I know, and, and and it was, I mean, it was on the, a stage nearby, it wasn't on the main stage, but it was, you know, we were the band after them, and it, you know what, we were like, oh, is it going to be good, and the tent was totally full, and it was like a lot of fun, and then, so it was one of those things, like, people heard we did it, saw, like, videos online, and then it was just like... It blew we, up from there. Well, people just kept asking us to do yeah. it, and we were like, at first, like, oh, we thought this was just like a fun one-time thing, like a one-off, and yeah. then it kept being this... Like, hey, come play here, come play there. Oh, we really want you to do this. Like, 
And so it kind of became this this thing unto itself that we didn't plan for, yeah. but now it's like its own phenomenon. Yeah, and it it, it really like <laughs> at at, the, at first when we started doing it and like when we tried our first Bat Sabbath tour in Canada, like there was a few shows that were like crazy. There was a couple that were like lukewarm, and we were like, do people even know Black Sabbath? <laughs> and th- there were some shows where I was like. You don't know Iron Man, and it's obvious. What's, there's some problem here. Like so, like, so I think maybe like we took it on ourselves to like just really force everybody to learn Black Sabbath and how great they are. That's and, great. That's so yeah, interesting. And, interesting. And, and you know, I, I really have to think back to when I was a kid and how all my favorite bands also taught me to love Black Sabbath and and really get into like their like back catalog in a way that you know I'd only listened to a few of the hits at the beginning. And, you know, listening to other bands that I love cover Black Sabbath, open up this whole other world of music for me. And it's cool to, like, keep keep that tradition going in, in, in the world of music that we play in. And, uh, and it's only gotten better. So now almost <laughs> seems like every other year we'll do, like, a full Bat Sabbath tour. That's unreal, um, man. And because it's, like, I mean, it's a ton of fun. They're oh, yeah. Amazing songs. And the, the response is just, like, it keeps growing. So it's, like, why would we say no to a great time and... And, and you know, and the chance to like play music we love anyway. So we'll cut to that, and then we'll come back to this conversation. Great, beautiful. Yeah. All right, and uh, we're back again, Scotty. Thank you very, very much again for coming out, man. That was a great, great first in- first half of the interview there. Stoked to be here. Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of fun. I'm stoked you haven't left yet. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, really interested to hear all about that. Uh, the Bat Sabbath stuff. I didn't know any of that information. Uh, you guys started that in like 2011. Yeah. yeah. It's been a couple of years now since he's been working that project. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you never know when we're gonna pop up and do some more of those shows we like to keep it special and kind of spontaneous so uh that's a, that's you know. the way to do it when you have a side project like that yeah, that's yeah. so like well it, again it's not obviously not our main thing like you know obviously. the bats is always it's always our first love and whatever but uh that's the kind of thing where you know um i'm not sure uh when we're doing it next but it's you know the odd, the odd time when it makes sense or like it's kind of hey, like a let, field trip at school yeah and it, and it tends to be one of those things where if like we're playing somewhere new um or if it's somewhere that we haven't done it before sometimes that makes sense we'll go, okay yeah you know what like we'll new territory yeah and, and you know the odd time um if uh you know some fans really want it we've added you know a sabbath songs and encore here or there like for fun yeah and, that's yeah and that's always a good bet. time it's always a safe bet well it's not even safe it's just like hey it's, it's fun and, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's almost selfish yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i was like oh man you know like i'll i'll, I'll play nib every day of my life and yeah. have the best time ever do so it. do it so, yeah. so you've been Sweet. involved with a lot of talented musicians very obviously right but i want to talk a little bit about uh what you do also because yeah. uh, a lot of people don't know that on top of uh, being in a kick-ass band you also produce yourself yeah uh, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh your production career yeah, I mean, like, you know, it, it's one of those things that... Um, like when did you start? Well, I mean, if you go way back, it, it's something that I always wanted to do, like, from when I was a teenager. You know, never really thinking, oh, obviously I'm going to be a professional musician. That's not, you know, one of those things. You, it's you, like the dream you, when well, you're you grow up thinking, like, you know, oh, I've got to have a job. I've got to go to university, all these things. The that things it's your like, parents well, say. Yeah, we're all, we're all programmed to, like, think that that's mm-hmm. what's expected of us and... And, you know, so I was like, norm. okay, well, what do I, what am I yeah. good at and what do I like? Well, I like music. So, um, you know, I, I can remember trying to like ask my guidance counselors, like, what can I do in music? And they were basically like nothing. And I was like, well, what about recording? <laughs> what about recording? Give up. No, li- I was like, literally, I was like, well, what about recording? I know there's recording schools. Like, talk to me about that. And they and wouldn't then, encourage you well, at all, they, right? No, they came back and they were like, oh, this is a bad choice. <laughs> all you're going to do is just be a gopher and make coffee for people and like, take out the trash and wow thanks you know man. you should canadian it, school system yeah it, it, it was pretty it was pretty sad you know and That's and depressing. so that yeah and, and anyway so you know i wasted a bunch of time going to university for stuff that i didn't care about and um and then eventually you know when you know when you're in your early 20s and you kind of take your future into your own hands like i stumbled upon this recording school in toronto and i went there and it changed my life in such a great way which one um it was called the audio recording academy it's not around is anymore is it rac now no or I, is what it cha- what changed it's, it to RAC? it's possible i'm not entirely sure it used to be called uh, Terra for short but oh, i don't okay. i really don't think it's around anymore but the um 
they were based in Ottawa and then they opened in Toronto and I was in their first Toronto class and, wow. and that was in like 2002 or something. And, um, yeah, anyways, long story short, that was just like the first time in my life where I was like, Oh my God, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It felt right. But yeah, because it's just like, I'm, I'm involved in music. Everything I cared about yeah, man. revolved around music. I was in so many bands all at the same time. Yeah. Like working a full time job, trying to go to university, and all I cared about was like having band practice and I playing agree, shows man. and I trying went to go to, on tour. Uh, my parents convinced me to go to electrical engineering. Yeah, yeah. And I did that for a year and I was paying for like half of it too, right? Great. Yeah. Um, and then I, I was like, I'm paying for half of this for what? for really chasing a job for money really and mm -hmm. I, I would just like look forward to the afternoons or the evenings when I used to like record or like get yeah, together yeah. with buddies and like that's when I dropped out when I was like I'm just doing this for someone else like I'm not really doing this because I want to yeah ever since man everything's been a little clearer like the pathway of a musician is a little harder because you have to look constantly for work and like the people that will click yeah for sure I mean you know when you when it comes down to it you have to be an entrepreneur absolutely like, and and if you you know, these are all things that I realize now in hindsight, um, whether you're in a band or whether you're recording or doing video stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, but I always think about, um, you know, I, I want a brief point in my life. I was really into photography mm. and um, and that was one of the things I went to university for. I took some photography courses, which were fun, but okay. it just wasn't my passion. But yeah. basically the one of the first things the the professor said, um, I'm not going to teach you how to be a photographer. If you're not already a photographer, you shouldn't be in this class at all. That's a pretty <laughs> and, bold statement. And, and, and I was yeah. like, well, fair enough, because music's kind of the same way. You got don't, it or you don't. Don't go to a recording yeah. school expecting to become a musician or this pro thing. You need to already kind of be doing a lot of that stuff. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna, you're sense. gonna learn some skills, which is important, and you can learn something new. There's not, I'm not gonna discourage that, but like to really persevere in music, you need to be focusing your life on music yeah it's got to be a big interest yeah, already and, and, absolutely and so this was the first time i was able to do that was you know by going to school being surrounded by people that cared about music as much as me yeah, inspiring I, environment yeah and and when i was done happened to coincide with when i started cancer bats and mm -hmm. so the thing at our school was uh when you graduated they gave everybody like free recording time there and so nice. i was like Took oh perfect i'm gonna sure. record my new band cancer bats and this is going to be like my fun thing. And it worked out. It worked out. Excuse me. And and basically like That's sick, man. Uh, you know, that demo that that I made, like that's what got us signed, like straight away, you know? And 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 it is really cool and and it's one of those things that all of a sudden my life spiraled into what I always really wanted to do was living living the dream. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really <laughs> fortunate, but at the same time like we all worked really hard and yeah. and again, focused our lives you know, to do the thing that we really wanted to do. And the great thing was that was the even better recording school. The even better producing school for me was being surrounded by other talented musicians yeah, man. by learning from great songwriters and producers like Gavin Brown and Eric Ratz and Kenny Luong, and then further going on. And we're Hands working with on like, stuff. yeah, yeah. And we're working with guys like Ross Robinson and Joel Plaskett nice, and dude. Ian wow. DeSaw and like tons of guys that have, you know, done amazing things and were are were, these all people you produced with these or? are all people who produced us oh, oh wow okay yeah. Ian DeSav also produced yeah, yeah. well that's essentially crazy. like I mean that's that's one of the things is that he Billy Talent were always uh, so amazing and generous to our band yeah. and you, so when we've toured with Canadian them too, right? music scene. oh we've yeah. toured with Billy yeah. Talent like all over the world yeah yeah, yeah 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 they're some of the greatest people you could ever meet and yeah. it and musicians and songwriters too like and that's why you know when we were writing albums like hail destroyer and dead set on living and stuff we brought our songs and we're like ian like what do you think of this like like what would you do differently or whatever and you know guys like that really helped us and you know it was really like from the from the start it was gavin brown who produced the, the first two billy talent records um he really taught us how to be better songwriters okay, and, that's and that's such like a key thing uh that a lot of bands lack mm -hmm. is they can create music yeah can they make great songs yeah and because it's a story you're trying to tell and it's it, hard to get across exactly and that so that's you know when it's come to now me coming into my own as a producer yeah. that's one of the things i think about what helped me the most what made such the big difference mm -hmm. of course having people who can make 
an amazing sound rec- sounding record that is so important, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of people that can do that. Yeah, that's who, true. Who can teach you to make a song that when you go to, you know, when you go to some small town in Switzerland that you've never been to <laughs> yeah. and there's a kid like over the like, valley <laughs> riding his BMX as fast as he can singing Hail Destroyer to back catch, at you. To catch the end of your and set. When, how do you do that? Yeah, like, yeah. like how does that happen? How do you make mm-hmm. those connections? And so like for me, it's not an easy task. I, no, it's not easy. But this is the thing is that, you know, my focus uh, primarily and not in not exclusively, but the thing that I, I love doing with bands is getting in the jam space and working out their ideas <coughs> and helping them transform them into yeah. something that other people can connect to in a strong way. Yeah. And you which, want people to resonate with your art. For exactly. Sure, and it, and it's, it's kind of and playing to deaf ears. For sure. And, and the number one rule that we kind of all learn is a true thing mm-hmm. uh, when you're recording is to make sure that you're getting it right from the source. Never think you're going to fix something later in, in the later stages. You're not going to fix it in the mix. You're not <laughs> going to fix it in mastering. Yeah. And it certainly isn't going to be fixed by the time it's on Spotify. You know, it, <laughs> you got to get and, that good raw take. Yeah. And, and well, you Absolutely. have to you have to start with a great song and an amazing performance. And yeah. and capturing those things is what I'm all about and what I try and focus, you know, um, on doing and then you know in other ways too there's there's other things i'll do like mixing and that's brilliantly and, worded man yeah. i think that's a philosophy that most producers producers do or at least the great ones carry yeah well and and i mean this is the thing is that i i've been able to <coughs> see how you know other great musicians and producers approach their own work and i've been able to soak that in and now i'm mm-hmm. like okay i was so lucky to learn from the best yeah it's like now i want to pay that forward i want to help other people uh, you know, with their own with their own music and their careers, and and especially if I can find people that are, you know, as passionate and as driven as can be, because mm-hmm. you know, combining that with, you know, um, with great songs, like that's the recipe for success. Yeah, for like hot like people songs that actually carry out for decades. Like now, uh, I guess your first, your your band Cancer Bats has been around for 12 13 years and like even 15, your 15 15 years almost, almost 15 That's yeah. crazy. next year it'll be 15 yeah, yeah. that is crazy insane yeah. like and you, you talked about you talked about like paying it forward and like you know you're kind of grooming a, a new kind of path here with well, some of the bands that you've recorded like you did the new speaker album yeah yeah fuck holy shit like <laughs> oh like, yeah those guys kill it dude speaker yeah. probably, like, even cold shoulder brought them up a couple weeks oh, ago dude. and yeah, they were like yeah. they were like yo speaker you gotta check out speaker you also got uh eagleson uh doom buggy big oh, dirty no, big dirty is doom buggy's a big dirty song oh fuck my bad Sorry, that's okay I was yeah. doing research there and i no, oh, nope. We got Lawless Sons. Yeah. Uh, this drama, which actually features a guest spot from Danko Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why was it like meeting Danko Jones? Well, I mean, the the cool thing is, is that <laughs> I mean, I met Danko uh, a bunch of years ago, like playing festivals, and it's one of those things where you're like, a lot of times we connect with Canadian musicians that you know maybe you know kind of just from local shows a little, just you know, kind of like, hey, what's up? Same scene. But then when you're thing. kind of like, you know, you're you're rubbing elbows in the same you know backstage areas and you know in uh, in australia or something like that that's where we connected with them and the cool thing is like danko's had me as a guest on his podcast a bunch and so since then it's just he's become a good friend of mine and basically you know there's those moments where is on the this drama record specifically where we're working on the song and we're like oh my god something something's missing from this mm-hmm. what can we add then turned into who can we add and and it was like if you could think of anybody to sing this there was a you know there was a few (laughs) few names floating around and one of them that he put out was like oh man i would love to have like danko jones and i was like well i know danko jones (laughs) and and you know make that happen and (laughs) and, you know i i I sent danko the song and he was like really into it and you know and was nice enough to you know come down to um uh, the studio that we were uh, working at, and did you know, the feature, and and he did the feature, and he knocked it out of the park, and it was it was a lot of fun doing that. So you know, the cool thing too was is like this drama. Um, if you don't know them, they're like this amazing hardcore punk band from the Canary Islands. Um, I did not know that they're from the Canary Islands. Yeah, which if anybody doesn't know where the Canary Islands are, it's it's off the west coast of Africa, and it's basically um, you know a territory of Spain, and mm-hmm. and basically we've as 
Cancer Bats, we've played there uh, like three times now, and it's this amazing, it's kind of like Hawaii in the Atlantic, if you think about it that way. There's like volcanoes and beautiful nature and everything, and there's this amazing punk rock scene in the island called Tenerife on uh, the Canary Islands, and and so those guys, like, they're the ones who initially brought us there, and they That's became wild. like they became like family to us. And wow. when they when it came time to do their new record, they were like, "Scott, we really want you to do this." And I was like, "I am so down." So I was fortunate enough to like go to the Canary Islands and like make that record there, and um, you know, and then also bring in somebody from Canada, like Danko, who <laughs> was a good friend of mine. And for them, it was cool because they're massive fans of Danko anyway. So that was like helping them That's fulfill a little bit of a dream. That, like all yeah. the way there that they would know who Danko Jones is. Oh. Like, I thought that was just like a, an, an us thing. Danko is really big in Europe. Really? Yeah. I did not know yeah, that. Like I'm learning something that's new That's the other side of it. There's a lot of like Canada who doesn't give him the respect that I think he deserves because he makes amazing music and always has. And you go, you go see them like in like Scandinavia, there are like, killing it and it's it's wow. really cool because i love seeing people you know really be appreciated around the world especially you know when they're when they're local friends you absolutely know? yeah, yeah it's always good man. to encourage the canadian music scene i mean that's what we're trying to do here right yeah uh i want to keep Definitely. this conversation going uh because your uh, performance was slightly shorter than our usual i'm just we're gonna do another 10 minute segment let's yep. do it uh, yeah. yeah 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 so these stories are fucking great i like I listen to them all day yeah, yeah. Seriously. Bust out some popcorn and just start eating we're gonna take a quick break and be right back with scotty middleton Yeah. So, so the fir- the first like full album I ever did was actually recorded in this building in the basement. Wow. Um, really? In the old Cancer Bats jam space. Um, and it the was the birth band- to a giant, bringing birth to a giant. Bur- one? Birthing, birthing the giant. Birthing no, the no, giant. no, no. That the first album that I produced, oh, like, I that see. I recorded yeah, yeah, myself okay. um, for another band that that wasn't my music, and um, it was this band called Hounds, which is members of like uh, Flatliners. Um, okay. And. Um, they're still around, eh? Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We're touring with them. Yeah, like, like, ne- I can't next be- month. Yeah, I can't fucking believe that. Oh, dude, they kill it. They're another band, huge Jeez, around the world. They man. they do so good. There's so many amazing Canadian bands. Um, but anyways, so the drummer Flatliners Paul is in this amazing hardcore band called Hounds, and um, that was the first record I ever did. Um, like you know, full record. I did some other songs here there for friends but this was like the first album that i that i did and it got released by like new damage records and it was you know like a really uh amazing experience and yeah we recorded it in this basement right here and the, the funny thing was is you know we're, we can kind of hear some bands playing in the background right now but every day at like mm-hmm. 4 p.m this like black metal like band would come in the drummer would come in 30 minutes before and black practices all the blast beats and then the whole band would come in and it was just like okay we can't record while they practice <laughs> it's just like there's no way to get this did out you ever find out who the band was no oh, i never met them i um yeah it's just working around their schedule <laughs> yeah, i know i really wish like one day like I, i've gone to practice like i've gone to rehearsal studios before where i was like walking down the hall and i'm like yo what That's the fuck sick. is that yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like like wait till they're done just be like What's the name of your band? All right, cool, thanks, man. We at Bats uh, a few years ago, like or actually probably like ten years ago now, we had somebody knock on the door of our jam space here, and they're like, uh, "Hey, uh, can one of you guys come next door to our jam room?" And I was like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> and I didn't know. Yeah, I like, feel like getting murdered today. Yeah, well, I didn't know what it was about. And then the guy was like, um, "I need to play you something," and I'm like, "Okay," and he like played me a song, and I'm like listening to it, and I'm like, "Oh, this is cool." Like. Yeah, all right. And he's like, I heard you guys jamming the other day. I think you're uh, stealing some of my music. (laughs) (laughs) And and we were like, "Uh, what? And I was like, play it again. He's like, yeah, yeah. I just heard you playing it. And I'm like listening. I was like, dude, I don't know what you're smoking. But (laughs) this is like. A little too high. Yeah, like they were doing some sort of like. I don't know, like Norwegian folk black metal, like you know, like it's like real kind of like oh, right? okay. ethereal medieval st- style stuff, okay. and we were just like thinking about oh. goblins and ghouls. Yeah, we yeah. were like, oh, I'm, you know, maybe it transferred through the walls, and he's just like, just so you know, I'm giving you a copy of the CD so that you know the copyright date 
of when we originally made this song. That's and it was so like, weird. I was like, whoa, that's really intense. Like, <laughs> that's I was so like, wow, whack. we just got, yeah. And I was like, oh, guys, okay, whatever we were working on, scrap it, because these guys are going to murder <laughs> these us. These guys yeah. are fucking serious. You're going to send yeah, demons yeah, it was, you know, it was, it, We had some good laughs We've here. We've already contacted our lawyer. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of production questions for you. Just because like, I'm a producer myself and I'm super awesome. curious. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer analog or digital? Um, I mean, I, did you, what are you talking about? Just in terms of like, do I prefer, prefer recording to tape or digital? Yeah, some people are like purists, right? Like I, I know a lot of producers that really specifically have an uncle who yeah. he built a studio only around digital because he just wanted to keep that essence. Yeah. Uh, so like sometimes that a lot of people care about um, that sort of like yeah, raw. I mean, for me, like I capture everything digitally. Like, you know, I record into a computer with um, like a 99% fully analog front end oh okay, so like I see. you know i i really believe in you know touching the transformers of mic pre's and compressors and eqs on the way in that's something you know like as you know as i've gone on through my production career it's learning those engineering things that allow me to like shape the record as i want to hear it yeah before we press record nice you, balance listening. Of both. yeah and i i think a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. is really important there's there's a lot to be said about um you know, taking the risk and committing yeah. to a sound ahead of time, especially in the, oh, in absolutely. the, That's in, half the of in the age, I think like where in, you know, the digital world, there's so many options absolutely, that, yeah. that if you leave it all open, it can never end the tweaking and this and that. It's like, I like to shape the vibe, um, you know, as much as I can on the way in. So that analog side is super important to me in, in regards to recording to tape. Um, you know, uh, I've never recorded a band myself to tape, uh, just, I don't own a tape machine and the cost it's is kind of, yeah, it's, it's a little yeah, bit prohibitive crazy. and it's a really, uh, a highly, uh, skilled operation to undertake mm -hmm. really, you know, like when it comes to editing on tape and stuff and while cancer bats, like we've recorded parts of our albums to tape before. Um, I never felt like that when we did that, that it made it shine through or I, anything. Yeah. It never made anything like better for me. Yeah, it's, it's like, Oh, this, hassle, this sound, well, I mean, it's it's so subjective, and I don't think yeah. anybody's yeah, really going to notice. Um, I think you could make a, a stronger impression by saying, like, okay, on this record, we only use ribbon microphones and tube gear and, you know, this and that. Like, there's certain things that all, you know, like, if you want to, like, go for a certain kind of thing, you can focus your, your sound. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that the tape itself is the only th the defining like, factor. Yeah, like because a lot of people think it's like mm -hmm. this is the yeah, magic bullet that's keeping me from making the most amazing sounding record. And you're you're it, like you're wrong. It's There's so many yeah. things that go into it, and it's um, yeah. So it's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I, I I love both. Yeah, but good balance I mean, of both. But I mean, digital is the, is the way that you know it's everybody the basically way does, right now quickest, easiest, most accessible, yep. and it sounds great. Like yep. I think the technology has gotten over that hump of me listening to stuff and saying, Oh, this is terrible. But guess what? Like all That's the true. records we listened to 20 years ago were made with bad digital gear, bad converters. And we still love those they records. Still hold up, they still yeah. hold up. 80s, it's just, 90s stuff. Yeah, of course. It sounds raw, know? man. It sounds yeah. real. Um, I'm also wondering what's your DAW of choice? Cause I personally use Ableton, a combination of Ableton and Pro Tools, Ableton okay. to create Pro Tools to mix and master. Yeah, I mean, I'll say like, I came up learning on Logic. That was my thing. Um, that's what I learned. Came up learning on Logic. Yeah, so that's what I learned. Old in, versions of Logic. Yeah, yeah, like really early Logic, like yeah. Logic 4 and 5. And, <laughs> it's like um, 10 now. Yeah, that's how old I am, right? And, you know, but see, I, I learned recording in this kind of funny age that was like digital was new and it was up and coming. Like edgy and yeah, stuff, and, yeah, and so um, a lot of those techniques and things were like different and untested and whatever, but, um, you know, my instructor at school was like a big fan of logic. So that's what I went with for a really long time. Okay. And I actually still love it. Like in terms of writing music, yeah. I probably prefer logic. Mm -hmm. um, just it's, it's, it's MIDI. very fluid. Yeah. And it's MIDI interfacing and the way it looks and just everything runs quite well. Mm -hmm. um, but Absolutely. I, I record exclusively in Pro Tools and mix in Pro Tools. That's it's a pretty um, standard. Yeah. It's one of those things that like when, when I made the commitment to focus my life um you know when i had free time away from cancer bats to be a producer right to say okay 
I've got to work in studios. What do you? What's the standard? What's the standard in every studio? Is Pro Tools? Pro Tools, absolutely. um, I don't think it's necessarily because it's better. I think there's great things about every DAW. Just like Um, the common denominator. Yeah, I I, I mean, I I still find like editing is quite great in it, Um, but uh, you know, at the same time, like I feel like there's better companies with better ethics than Avid, and you know, it's Mm -hmm. I'm not using Pro Tools because. Uh, I want to support them. It's like I want to use Pro Tools because I want to be able to go to any studio in the world and, and work transfer there. Transfer your file and over. Yeah. Transfer my file able. over. Just jump in because yeah. when I tried to do that as a Logic user, uh, every studio was like, "Oh, we've You're got an old version of Logic." Or yeah, um, even then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have this. Uh, no, and we don't want to like specific install your version of Logic on here, and it just became such a hassle. Yeah. And then once I learned Pro Tools, which wasn't that hard, you know, I just had to study it for a year like anybody else. Yeah. And you know, I'd always used it here or there, um, but once I put the focus into it, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is this the is shortcuts. This and is all great that. and easy, mm-hmm. and you know, nine times out of ten, it makes my life easier. So. Yeah. I can put up with the other problems with it. And, That's yep. awesome, man. Well, uh, while we are uh, running, we're almost well, running out of time. Is there anything time. else? Like, I mean, uh, for for production, yeah. like that was awesome. Okay, like, cool. I, like, cool. Because like otherwise it'd be specific. Like, mm-hmm. y- we could have like a long, long forty minute topic about just producing Let's do it. metal. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for the for the sake of time, uh, we're gonna do a quick fire ten questions. The cool. last one is gonna be one of these song yeah. conversation. Let's questions. get it going. Let's get it Perfect. going quick. Yeah. For our audience members, song conversations is a play we. Uh, a uh, game we play every week with our guests is uh, just to get to know a little bit of their musical background. We're going to quick fire a couple of questions go, here. Go, go, quick, 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 quick. Question number one. First album that you remember buying? Uh, Metallica's Black Album. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect answer. Your favorite food? <laughs> Tacos. Hey. Good answer. So far, so good. First show you ever went to or remember going to uh, uh, White Zombie with Reverend Horton Heat and the Melvins oh my god I fucking wow. love the Reverend Horton Heat and the Melvins I can't That's believe that show even show. happened yeah. in the first place your favorite Toronto spot your favorite Toronto bar that you uh, like to go Sneaky to Sneaky D's nice yeah, yeah. a classic yeah. I mean if you love tacos uh, <laughs> uh, your favorite gig that you've played the mem- most memorable gig. Oh, my God. Gig. That's so hard. Um, You've played a lot of pretty big ones. Yeah, I it's mean... It's hard to play, uh, I, pick a f- favorite. Yeah, it's tough. Um, Top pro- three, then, maybe. Yeah, I mean, probably when we headlined the Phoenix in Toronto the first time, yeah. Nice. What, was that, like, 2007? No, it was Six? 2000... Actually, it was 2013... No, 14, when we released Searching for oh, Zero. Oh, okay, okay. Our, our second last record. Um, it, was the, it was the first time we'd ever played there. And as a venue, I... You know, growing up seeing so many shows there, and it felt amazing to play there. Finally. Big moment for yeah. you. Uh, your most used emoji, if you have, uh, pull yeah, up, pull up, yeah, metal horns. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, actually, hilariously, that's mine too. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, the last song you heard or remember hearing? Uh, the last song I heard is a song called "Saint Jude, Lord of the Flies" by this band, Champion Lover, that I'm producing. Cool. And Champion Lover. Yeah, and it's amazing. Okay. They're such a good band. I can't Everyone wait. Everyone should check them out. I can't wait for that to come out. Yeah. Uh, if you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh, time travel. Oh, yeah. Right. That's it. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Question number nine. Your, your favorite city to tour so far? London. London. England. London. Yeah. 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 London, you have England. a lot not of followers London, Ontario. over there. Yeah. I, I mean, in, in the UK. And not even that. It's just, it's such an amazing city. It's so, so huge and multicultural and just, it's so much fun there. Every, every time I go there, I have a great time. All right. And the conversations question. Yes. Which artist or band has the coolest image or personal style? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say cancer bats, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely would not. Uh, oh my god, that's that, tough. That is right. tough the, one. The, the coolest. Oh wow. That is, it's hard because I don't really think about music in that way. In that way, like, but I might get the juices flowing. I think personally, Motorhead. <laughs> they have always had the coolest kind of style really and image, right? Image. Like, I mean, I, I rest don't, in peace. I, but no, I don't agree. I, you know what? Honestly, I, I kind of miss the. I missed what White Zombie brought to the table when I was a kid. They just dressed completely different than everybody else. They That's would true. wear weird secondhand clothes and cover them in like like NASCAR patches and stuff, <laughs> and like and. I don't know. There was just something about that where I was just like, this is 
they it looked like they made all their own clothes and somehow <laughs> yep. it was very just genuine. the coolest thing ever. It's the yeah. third time and, that that white zombie's been brought up today. Just yeah, by yeah. The way. Well, yeah. it is. Yeah. And when it, and so when I was like when I was like thirteen and really into white zombie, uh, still am by the way. I I saw Rob Zombie had a um, he had these uh, fingerless skeleton hand gloves. And um, wow. and I was just like, those look so cool. <laughs> and then so like on my first trip ever with like my friends when we like went to downtown Toronto to go shopping in like Kensington Market, I found a pair of those gloves and cut the fingers off, and I like wore them every day for like two years, <laughs> and you, that was like my thing. You're and saying you were really cool back then. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was super cool. And uh, anyways, but it was mostly just because White Zombie was cool. Yeah, yeah. They still are. In that's my opinion. that's well, awesome. Man. Was, yeah. But um, yeah, we're all out of time. We've we've already taken up too much of your time. We know oh, that you're a busy guy. Happy you to got be here, guys. To do, this so was a lot of fun. Again, thank you very very much, man, for coming out. It means yeah, the world Scotty, to us. Honestly, it's an honor. I've been a fan since like early high school. Oh, days. that's awesome, yeah, man. Yeah, that was, means a lot. That's really can, cool. I can't even tell you how excited I was when this guy. He's like, yeah, no, we have Yo, Scotty. Got Scotty. In. It's Scotty. I uh, I yeah. think I, I I probably fell off my seat. Uh, <laughs> <quite> <laughs> you literally. were probably drunk. But again, audio station. I'm Andy. Got our good friend Scotty Milton from Cancer Bats. And I'm Louis Vasquez. This is the audio station. We are bringing you the life behind music to light. Thank uh, you. Yeah, come back next week for more uh, guests. For more music and things. All right. More topics that you might be interested in. All right. Thank Th you very much for watching. And Thanks. subscribe. Okay, do that too. <laughs>